Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I wanted to talk to you about tea blending and it has been a while since I've been able to chat with you and I wanted to sit in here and chit chat and maybe even talk a little bit about my new podcast. So let's see where to start. All right, so I have a tea blending guide, and if you haven't already grabbed it, I'm linking to it in the notes here, or if you're on Instagram with me today, you can go to my profile in Sicilian Tea Company, and the link will give you a link to the tea blending guide. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about this guide because I know there have been several people who've downloaded it so I know that people are interested in it and I wanted to maybe expand on this tea blending guide and find out what you would like to hear more about so in the tea blending guide I talk not only about how to create these recipes but also to create um, what kind of herbs and uh, spices you would want to match up with different kinds of teas. Because as I've been doing these tea education with you, there are, you know, as you know, a difference between teas and tassans. So I get into that. I also give you some recipes that I've made myself and they've been tested. I've had them in, uh, in classes and people have loved them and made them themselves. And they're really easy to do. And I also include a way to do the measurement because if you're going to be making tea blends, you have to consider if you like it, you're going to want to multiply it and make a lot of it and then have more for yourself and for your friends and family if you want to make gifts. So I talk about that in this guide. There's another side to it that I don't know if you're interested in, and I do understand from the Facebook group that there are people who have their own tea businesses and may be more interested in the business side of creating blends, but not only doing that, but creating tea blending parties because they are a fantastic way to bring people in and create customers. I know that I still have people who have uh, come to one of my tea blending events here in Sacramento and they buy from me online because they have that connection with me. They can trust me. They know that I'm there to answer any questions that they have. So if they have an issue with anything, they know they, who, they know who I am and they know they can talk to me. So creating those bonds between the people that you are having these tea blending classes is a fantastic way in order to build your tribe, to build that key group of people who keep coming back to you again and again. So if you want to grab this guide, be sure to do so and you'll get all the basics. But if you want to learn more about the business side thing, make sure that you comment below and tell me that that's what you want to hear. And if you're joining me here today, hit like, press some hearts, let me know you're here. Hi, Be Wellness Tees, how are you doing today? Uh, and just like, just let me know that you're, you're here and I'll make sure that I give you a shout out and contact you. Um, so if you have a specific question, if there's something that you have this burning question about what to do with teas, let me know. But I kind of want to go through what I do talk about in this guide because it's not, it's a fairly substantial guide and it's totally free. It's about a little less than 18 pages. And I wanted to expand on some of this and I'm wondering if there might be some people out there, maybe you're one of them, who wants to um, learn even more about this and I could create a book. Um, hi, Venice Beach, Nick, how are you doing today? Um, so let's see here, what do we got going on here? All right, so in the guide, I actually go through tasting notes. And if you're familiar with any of the work that I do, I make sure that I do a breakdown of all kinds of things. So tea flavors and aromas, I have a breakdown for that on the website. Um, these are things that can you can get into great detail. And if you're a tea sommelier or somebody who's along those lines, oh, my dog. See, this is the beauty of live TV. I think the mailman came. So, <laughs> gotta love a protective Frankie. So, anyway, so these tasting notes really go into detail, but in this guide, you're gonna see kind of an overview. 
Um, and in that overview, I talk about what you can expect from the six types of teas. So if you don't have a great familiarity with the six types of teas, it does give you a breakdown in those. Additionally, I talk about the basic spices and herbs that you can use in these tea blends. And when we're talking about these different spices and herbs and uh, peels, because there's orange peels, there's lemon peels, grapefruit peels, all those kinds of things, when we're talking about those, we have to be aware of the steeping times. I don't think that everybody pays attention to the steeping times based upon my experience of blended teas. Um, and if you're just joining me, say hello, let me know that you're here. And I will talk to talk more about that because it's it's important for the impact that we want to create on the person who's drinking our tea, right? We don't want to create a bitter flavor. We want to create something that they enjoy, that they love, that they want to tell people about. And when we do that, it I know it makes my day when someone comes up to me and tells me, oh my God, this is the best tea I've ever had. I can't believe you made this. I love that feeling. It's so great. So when we're considering that, you want to think about what kind of herb and spice am I using and what kind of tea am I using? Because if you're brewing teas on the lighter spectrum, which are your white teas and your green teas, those teas, and even oolong, some of them, those teas are going to have a, a shorter steep time. The water that you're going to be using is not going to be as hot. And therefore, you're not going to want to put herbs or spices in there that are going to take longer to brew, that are going to require a hotter temperature of water. So for instance, the reason why chives work so well, like I know chives like the catch-all right for tea, but chai meaning a blend of black teas and cardamom, cloves, uh, you, you get all those really uh, juicy, like you need to have hot water to really seep into those spices in order to extract their flavors. Well, black teas hold up to that better, which is why most of the chais that you see are going to be black teas. You can brew black teas for a short amount of time if they're high quality, but you can also brew black teas for a longer period of time and then the spices blend well with them. Um, that's just that's just the way that tea works. And if you're on the other side of things, if you're using a white tea where you're going to be using cooler water and you're going to be using um, a, a shorter steep time, maybe you want to put more delicate herbs in with that white tea, something like a peppermint or something like, um, gosh, a lemongrass, something like that, which really doesn't need that much time to extract the flavor. You can go ahead and brew that with your white tea just as you usually would, and you're going to have a great cup of tea. So just keep those things in mind when you're considering what you want to blend. And when you do that, you're going to create a blend that somebody's going to enjoy a lot more. Um, and there's a lot of herbs and spices that go across that spectrum, right? Like you can still use lemongrass in a black tea. It doesn't sound really appealing. Um, peppermint in a black tea, for instance. Let's use that example because that's a little more appealing. But the peppermint, you could use that in white tea as well as black teas. And they do that all the time because peppermint just seems to blend very well. So in the guide, I talk a little bit about what kind of combinations you may want to consider when you're doing that. And I talk about different the different flavors of some of those herbs and spices just in case you're not really familiar with them because one of the reasons I got into blending tea is because I wanted to become more familiar with spices and herbs and that just wasn't something I was comfortable with until I started blending it with something that I really enjoyed which was tea and once I started playing around with it I started to gain a greater familiarity with what kinds of spices are even out there because there's a myriad of spices, right? And herbs, all of those different things. And you can get them anywhere online and you can get them in the grocery store. Although the grocery store, I don't, you know, I'm not sure some of the rarer things I would not get there. So for instance, people don't buy a lot of rose petals. I probably wouldn't get them there if they're at the grocery uh, store. Hey, Mr. Coffee Freak, glad you joined. I love it. I love seeing you guys. Thanks for saying hi. So um, yeah, if you're just joining me, say hi, give me some hearts. I would love to see them. It makes me feel good and I get to be on here and chat with you and know that you're, you're here with me. So uh, thanks for joining me. 
So then I really get into this guide. I talk about how to create your tea recipe. So uh, in that link to the Tea Blending 101 from Sicilian Tea Company, you're going to see uh, how do you even start with this? Well, you want to start with your base ingredient. You want to figure out what kind of tea you're working with because that's really going to determine any of the herbs and spices that you're working with whether or not you're going to be using something lighter that would go with a white tea or something hardier that might go with a black tea. Um, there's some things that you may want to consider in terms of the quality of your teas and your herbs and spices. I find getting the highest quality possible is just amazing flavor wise. Like it just, it just pops like the the flavor of the tea i mean there's no comparison when you are grabbing a stale bag of tea or a bag of tea dust and blending it with you know stale spices or ones that have been sitting around for a while you know that have been ground up it, there's a big difference in the flavor and so when you have freshly ground spices it's all the better i know it's not always possible when you're at home but if you're creating one of these tea blending parties that I'm, I'm talking about and that I've had, I really think that it makes a difference. And I think people find it much more enjoyable and they're much more comfortable with you when you can tell them, you know, my teas are responsibly sourced. My herbs and spices are responsibly sourced. It's not always possible to get like the, the really popular things like vanilla bean, for instance, that's a really popular um, spice that people want to use in their blends. It's delicious. It's amazing, but it's very expensive. So if you are using something like vanilla bean, which I only use vanilla bean in my, and my tea blending groups, I might use it sparingly. I might limit it in a certain way just so that it's fair for everybody. And I also do something where I cut it into small bits. So I don't leave it to them to figure out how much, um, vanilla bean to use. I actually cut it up myself and I kind of spread it around. So I'll have a couple of them in the class. So that way nobody's monopolizing the vanilla and nobody feels left out because it is something that I like to use in my recipes. It's, uh, but it's a little pricey if you're doing that, but it's a nice, it's a nice special thing to get to do. Oh, and don't use vanilla bean powder. Whatever you do, do not use vanilla bean powder. It is the messiest thing you will ever use, and it makes the water murky. It's disgusting. Don't do it. I'm just going to give that to you as a, as a service announcement. Uh, just I tried it. doesn't work. All right, so I also have a nice chart in here to help you out so you can multiply for a higher yield like we were talking about. If you find something that you like, and remember, take notes, take notes, take notes. If you're having a class, be sure that you have paper and pencils available because they're going to want to take notes. Because if they like what they drink, you're going to want to multiply to create that higher yield. And I get into detail about how you're going to actually want to break this down into easy steps. And so I help you measure it all out. Now, it's a, that's a whole other class. I could walk you step by step through that. Uh, and I and I do some of that on my website. If you go to SicilianTeaCompany.com forward slash tea hyphen recipes, I have an article called Mad Scientist. And on there, there's also a video there that kind of breaks down some of the tea blending there. So it'll also give you a chart and it'll give you a link to the tea blending guide that I'm referencing right now. So you might want to check that out. All right, and then I've got a ton of recipes in here I've made myself and tried myself. Uh, so an easy hibiscus infusion, some fragrant chamomile. I call it tea in here just because, you know, people get confused. It's a tisane, but, you know, you, you call it tea, a tisane, whatever you want. I'm leaving that to you. None, none of my business. All right, so we've got that. We've got some mold spices and an easy chai blend that I talk about, and I run through how to not only blend it but how to brew it um, we've got some different recipes a spiced black tea a relaxing rose tea and a luxe chocolate tea because oh my goodness if you haven't had raw cacao nibs you have not lived so you may want to check that one out uh, and then i also have some cold brew recipes it's summertime and i am a huge fan of cold brewing tea i talk all about that on my website but I also give you some recipes on some refreshing, an, a refreshing iced tea recipe and talk about some resources in this guide. So if you have questions about brewing, if like having this conversation has brought anything up for you, anything that you want to talk about in terms of how to create a profitable tea blending party, which is kind of difficult to do, I have to say. 
uh, at least what I have experienced, because what you're really doing is introducing yourself to people. You're introducing yourself to a group of people who want to or who already love tea and maybe they want to learn more about tea and it's our job as educators to really talk about what tea is and we're you know we're so fortunate to have people in the coffee industry who really teach about coffee you know barista to barista right there's this whole culture of coffee but we really haven't talked to one another about creating a culture of tea when you know you go into a coffee shop you are just not going to find that same knowledge about tea no matter how much they try because that's just not their specialty that's not what they're really interested in they have tea as a courtesy for people like us who like tea and that's really nice but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really show the range of tea and allow a conversation about tea that could happen if we start learning more about it. And each one of us is an educator, whether or not you're sipping tea as a hobby and for fun, or whether or not you are going to um, be somebody who sells tea. Hi, Tea Leaf Theory. I love it. I love seeing you there on Instagram. Um, so if you are, um, if you are part of the tea conversation, it's really up to us as educators to start talking to people about tea. And it's kind of, um, I don't know about you, but when I am talking about tea to somebody who is a non-tea drinker, I think they feel, and this might just be my perception, that tea is just like too hotty, like it's just too highfalutin, whatever you wanna call it. And the thing is, is it's not that, it's that it's subtle, it's delicate, there are a range of different teas and people just haven't been educated as to the range of teas. And that's why I create things like, um, like the discussion I created online about bitter tea because so many of the people that I've spoken to have a bad experience with tea and they say it's bitter and it's gross and they don't like it and they get a stomach ache and I want to have a conversation about that because it's not that all tea is like that it's that there's a range of teas and the way they brewed their tea and the the kind of tea that they drank was not something that was good <laughs> I'll just put it that way I'll just put it that way and usually when I talk to that person it's somebody who steeped a bag of um, I hate to say, it's Lipton tea, okay? I mean, we all know who we're talking about when we're talking about tea dust, it's Lipton. And I mean, I used to drink it all the time before I had a tea business and before I knew the difference between teas. And when you leave your, you know, as you probably already know, when you leave your tea bag in a cup and you let it brew all day long, of course it's gonna be bitter and, and it's going to be difficult to drink and you may even get a sour stomach from it. Of course we know that. And so when we talk to people about tea, it's really up to us to educate them and say, hey, you know, I have a suggestion in a really nice way, right? Like in a really nice way, not in a snobby way, not in the like, oh my God, I know tea way better than you way. It's a, hey, you know, I have a suggestion for you. This has worked for me. Maybe you want to try it. Or hey, I've got a bag of oolong tea. You might want to try that. I have tea on me all the time. I don't know about you, but I love my tea so much. I seem to have loose leaf tea on me all the time in little baggies. So if you do that, I'd love to hear from you. It makes me feel better. Anyway, um, that's all I have for you now. If you, um, if you like this video, hit like and comment and tell me that so I can do more videos like this in the future. I could do little mini classes. If you have a topic of interest that you'd like to hear about, I'll do mini classes in the future. I would love to know what you want to hear about and DM me if you're, you know, Facebook or on Instagram, message me, tell me what you're thinking, tell me what you want to hear about because I love tea so much, I will just talk about it all day. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you showing up. Oh, I almost forgot. Okay, so if you are interested in making an impact in life generally, not just in the tea world, but in your life and maybe in the lives of others, I have created a podcast that I think might be up your alley. It's called Soul Roadmap, and it has been my passion project because in addition to running this Sicilian tea business, I'm also a coach. And 
all that means is a way, it's, it's like a fancy way of saying, you know, I ask a lot of questions to get you thinking. That's what a coach is all about. It's just someone to help you get thinking. So part of all of that is soul roadmap. And I ask questions of other people or I share my own experiences about how to make mindset shifts, things that you can do in your life that, you know, they can, like, for instance, this week, I talked to Kristen Aurelis, and she is a mom. She's got two kids. She has two businesses, a husband. She's ambitious. And she shares with us the secrets of managing time for her. And it's important that, you know, if we have these passions, if we want to create the impact in our lives that we want to have and, in, and impact other people's lives too, is that we manage our own time, right? Is that we pay attention to how engaged we are and how committed we are in creating the lives that we want. So if you are interested in that, if, if any of that sounds interesting, I would love if you would join me on Soul Roadmap. You can find it on iTunes, uh, dinacataldo.com forward slash iTunes, or you can go to dinacataldo.com forward slash podcast and you can hear it online. So with that, thank you so much for hanging out with me this morning and I will talk to you next week, all right? Have a great weekend. Bye for now.